Look at your screens. What do you see? You see me, I know, but look closer. What do you see? Look with a magnifying glass. What do you see? You see pixels, right? And most of you know about this. If you look more closer, what do you see? I'm not talking about zooming in. I'm not talking about control plus. I'm talking about physically looking closer to your screen. What happens? You see pixels, right? And if you're looking at a color photo, if you're looking at a color image, you would notice that each pixel emits one color. But what if you look more closer? What if you have a really nice microscope or a really nice magnifying glass? You look more closer. Look at your screen. You'll see that each pixel emits three colors, red, green and blue. Now, even if you are looking at a black and white image, each pixel will have three colors, a red, green and blue. And this is true for all the screens all around the world, right? Modern screens, of course, I'm not talking about back from the 1990s, 1970s. All right, that was a different technology back, back then. But now we have RGB screens, red, green and blue. And that's the way camera captures images. But there's a confusion I know. Because when you open an image into Photoshop or any other application, and you zoom in, let's zoom in. This is one of my favorite images that I clicked. And if you zoom in, you see the pixels, right? But you don't see those three colors. You don't see those three colors combining to form the image as a whole. But let me tell you something. Today, I'm going to prove it right inside of Photoshop that every image is composed of red, green and blue. What I'm going to do, I'm going to break down an image into red, green and green and blue and then combine all of them together to form the image again. Also, at the end of the video, we'll do some fun stuff that will make your concept more clear about this RGB thingy. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and as you can see, we are now in our layers panel, right? So let's move on to our channels panel. So this is the channels panel. If you cannot see channels panel, go to windows and then select channels. Yep. Then you have the channels panel open. So these are the channels panel. Now let's make it a little bit bigger to make the thumbnails bigger. I always make them bigger. I prefer bigger thumbnails. All you need to do, you need to right click, go to select large. So they are bigger now easier to see. Now watch. It's showing that this is a combination of RGB. That means red, green and blue. And below this channel, it shows you the separate channels, red, green and blue. And if I go ahead and click in each of them, if I click on red, it shows me the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel. But some of you might say, oh, but they're all black and white. Well, let me tell you something. It's just a way of representation. Look at it in this way. So if I go ahead and select the red channel, all the white areas are the areas where you have a red at its maximum. The darker areas have less of red and the black areas have no red. So the more the brightness in a particular area, the more a red light it will have. Now point to be noted here. I said a red light, not red color, because when you look at your screen, you don't have just red random colors. You have red light emitting out of your screens and we'll get to that later in this video. So the brighter the area, the more the red light. Now, similarly in this image, the brighter the area, the more blue light, the darker the area, the lesser blue light. And if there are black areas, there's no light. All right. So, oh, oops, this was green and this is blue. I hope you get the idea what I'm talking about. Now let's move back and let's divide this image, separate this image into three colors. Now to select the areas that are red, all we need to do, we need to press and hold our control key or command key if you're using a Mac and let's click on the red channel. This selects the areas that are red. Now let's get back to layers panel. Okay. And let's create a solid color. To create a solid color, click here on the adjustments layer icon and select a solid color. And this time we will select red. So 
You just cannot randomly select any red. This is a specific kind of red that you have to select. You have to select pure red. And to select pure red, we need to type in green zero. We don't want green. CRGB, red, green, blue. We don't want blue, so blue zero. We want full red. It would be 255. So the maximum value for R, G or B is 255 and the minimum value is 0. So 255 is the maximum value. Why is 255 the maximum value? Well, each of the values of R, G, B is stored in 8 bits. And if you are a computer student or if you know a little bit of computer, you know that in 8 bits, 255 is the maximum that you can show that you can represent maximum number that you can represent okay let's click okay now let's go back to this layer let's select this layer go back let's turn this layer off let's turn this red thing off let's go back to our channels and now this time let's make a selection of the areas that are green so you might not see green areas but there is green because they are all combining together to give the color that you want so yeah, let's go ahead and select the green thing. Press and hold control or command. Click on it. The green areas will be selected. Let's create a solid color of green. Not any green. Green 255. Red 0. Blue 0. Okay. Let's turn this off again. Now what is left? Go to the channels. Blue is left. We'll do the same for the blue areas. And we'd select a solid color. This time blue 255. 0 0. All right, now let's go back to the channels and turn on the RGB. Oops, something's amiss, wrong happened. Let's turn it off. Let's turn on the RGB. Yeah. So we have separated the images into three colors. Now what if I turn all of them on? You should see the image again, right? But let's try it. Let's try what happens. If I turn, let's turn it off. If I turn all of this, so this is the blue light, blue color. This is the green color. And this is the red color and it looks kind of awkward. Did I fail? No, not at all. Do you remember I mentioned light instead of color? We need to convert these into light, not colors. Now they are what? They are, they are colors. Until and unless you have a light instead of a flat color, you have to have an emitting light. These images won't be formed. And to convert these into light, all we need to do, we need to convert the blend modes, change the blend modes to screen. So change all of the blend modes to screen. Right? Does it help? No, it doesn't. Have I failed? No, I haven't. Why? Because I'm throwing a light. And to throw a light, I would need a surface. A surface that has no light. Right? What is the surface with no light? A black surface. So I need to make a black layer. So solid color, I go ahead and select a black layer and put the black layer beneath the blue thing. Now watch, watch, we have the whole image again. Right? We have the whole image again. Now if I turn off this main layer, this is already turned off. Watch. So all we have is these three colors and black. If I turn off any color, there will be just one color. So this is the red, this is the green, and this is the blue. We combine all of them, it gives you the image. Now let's do some fun stuff. Let's delete all of these. Let's delete it. And let's create a new layer. Let's delete all of these images. Let's select all of them and just, we cannot delete all of them. We have to create a new layer. Okay, all right. Now this time, let's paint. Let's paint. All right, let's create a black layer first because we need a surface. We need a surface with no light. So solid color and black selected. Okay, so this is our first layer. Above this, we would create a layer. Let's paint in with blue. All right, let's take a brush. Let's paint in with blue completely. Let's paint, paint in with blue. All right, so this is blue. What if I take, what if I change the blend mode to screen? Create a new layer. Oops, create a new layer. And let's select green this time. 255, zero. So green, we have selected the green. And let's paint it. Let's change the blend mode again to screen. Let's do it again once more. Let's change the color to red. 255, zero, zero. All right, let's paint it. Let's change 
the blend mode to screen. What do you see? You see white. This explains that when you have the same amount of red, the same amount of green and the same amount of blue, you have a neutral color. This just doesn't mean white, it can be gray too. Suppose you have 50% red, 50% green, 50% blue, you have gray color. Suppose you have 100% red, 100% green, 100% blue, you have white color. Suppose you have 0% red, 0% 0 green, 0% blue, you have black color. So that's how it all works. So even if you're looking at a black and white image, it just means that the red, green and blue lights are in equal proportions. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you understood the concept of RGB. And if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and do give us a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you Keep creating. I hope my camera is still on because my battery is low and my Photoshop has just hanged. All right, all right, it's, it's back to life, is it? I don't know, this video is not going good for me. Shit, oops. You know what, I'm, I'm just gonna look in the camera and wait. Yeah, it's back to life, no.